Hi, it's Elise here at Bowman Library with a whole new teen book spotlight. So this week, we are exploring some of the books that have been some of the recent 2020 award winners. So believe it or not, just like the Oscars or the Grammys, there are book awards presented every year for books. And there's awards that range from the best book of the year in certain categories, the books written by specific authors and about specific things or they feature maybe a character that has a disability or there's literally a book award for everyone fiction nonfiction, graphic novels so those came out a couple weeks ago we're taking a look at some of the award winners and some of the honors that were presented now there's way more than the six that we're going to talk about today but this will just kind of give you an idea a taste of some of the different awards that were given out to these amazing books so let's get started our first one is an ebook this week we're doing something again different like last week this one is last night at the telegraph club this was a national book award winner this was a prince honor book it is amazing highly you know oh, i'm gonna tell you right now a lot of the books in this stack are some of the best books of last year literally so it is 1954 17 year old american born chinese lily she's she's getting ready to enter her senior year of high school and she's lived her whole life in san francisco's chinatown she's always been what her parents have been expected she's done what she's supposed to do she's been this model student but she cannot help but feeling that she doesn't always belong to the ideal that is set for her. As Lily loves learning about space exploration, like her dream is to work for NASA and to, and to focus on going, getting into outer space. The only person who seems to understand her, who seems to get her, is her fellow classmate named Kathleen. And as soon as a budding relationship starts to bloom, between them, Lily doesn't really know quite what to make of it because as this is happening, Lily's also kind of starting to figure out that, or become aware that she's, she's attracted to women and not men as, as what's expected of her. Now, when she and Kathleen sneak out one night to go to the Telegraph Club, it's this well-known lesbian bar, that is when Lily's life starts to change forever. But this book is it's more than just trying to figure out your sexuality. It also deals with racism, sexism. McCarthyism plays a huge part because it is 1954. And it's, you know, trying to figure out who you are and, and what defines you. Like, are, like, is it you or is it other people's ideals for you? Now, the ending is realistic for the time period, but that is where the beauty of this book comes in. Melinda Lowe, the author, she, she keeps it to the year and the location of the story and and let's just let's just let the personalities develop. This is last night at the Telegraph Club. Our next one is from a whisper to a rallying cry. Loved this book. This is probably one of the best nonfiction books I read last year. So eye-opening. So it's June 19th, 1982 in Detroit, Michigan. Vincent Chin, who is Asian American, he's out celebrating his bachelor party when he gets into a fight with a white man and his stepson. Their names are Ronald and Michael. Now this fight ends with Ronald and Michael beating Vincent to death with a baseball bat in the parking lot of a bowling alley. Now, these two were arrested, but they weren't charged with murder. Instead, they were charged with manslaughter, which is basically when you accidentally kill someone. So it was an accident what they did. Now, they weren't even sent to jail. They had to pay a $3,000 fine, and they, they went on probation and did community service. That was the punishment they got for their actions. Now, that outrage that was felt especially in the Asian American community led to the situation becoming the first federal civil rights case in American history involving an Asian American. Now this is filled with first person accounts from the defendants, from um, lawyers, family and friends, eyewitnesses, as well as there's newspaper articles, there's journals, there's photos. And you'll be asking yourself the question that should have been asked in the first place when all this started was the murder of Vincent Chen and it was a murder was it a hate crime now again I highly recommend this you will feel as though you're right there through all the events it takes you through chronologically and will give you an insight into an event that you probably didn't even know happened in our country but played a crucial role in trying to further the rights of everyone this is from a whisper to a rallying cry in the shadow of the fallen towers okay 
This is a graphic novel by Don Brown. Don Brown is amazing. Highly recommend all of his graphic novels. He has this knack of taking historical events and turning them into graphic novel forms that will just suck you in. Did an awesome one about Hurricane Katrina, Great American Dust Bowl. This one is no exception. This is In the Shadow of the Fallen Towers. Now, this takes a look at the events of September 11, 2001, not only in terms of what happened that day, but then he also goes beyond that to the days, the weeks, the months, and the years that followed. Now, this, again, he explores the events that happened that day from New York City to Washington, D.C. to Shanksville, and he tells it through the eyes of people who were there. There's the first responders, there's survivors, there's volunteers, there's soldiers, there's even what the what Witnesses, people just walking down the road, down the street, and seeing what happened. You will get a sense of an understanding for what happened on 9-11. But you will also then get a sense of the feelings and the emotions that happened after. Because what happened on 9-11 and then what, what came after that changed the history of America and the world. And it had far-reaching consequences than what anyone could have imagined. And we're still dealing with those today. This takes a look at the physical, the emotional, and the mental aspects. If you don't really know or understand what happened on 9-11, this graphic novel is a great place to start. Or even if, if you were alive like me, this was a great, this is a great way to look at the events of that day, but not only that day, but then after. This is In the Shadow of the Fallen Towers. Firekeeper's Daughter. Okay, this won the Prince Award. This is considered to be the best book for YA last year. It probably was one of the best books I have read last year. For all the press it's getting, it's going to be turned into a movie. It's supposed to come on Netflix at some point. This book is worth it. And I say that because a lot of books that get a lot of press, I feel like when I read it, maybe I just have my expectations too high. But this one lived up to it. We meet Dawn as Dawn finds herself stuck between these two worlds. Her father is an American Indian and his side doesn't really accept her because then her mother's white so it makes her half white. And her mother's side sees her father and his culture as this defect. But you know so no one wants to claim her. She doesn't know where she she falls within these two family groups. Now after graduating high school Donna should be focusing on getting ready to go to college but that soon gets put on hold after the unexpected death of her uncle and then her grandmother's failing health. And that is when her life then takes a turn that she does not see coming. When she witnesses a murder caused by someone who's in this meth-induced haze, Donna decides that maybe there's a reason why she's still at home. And that may be to try to put a stop to the cycle of drug abuse and use that takes place in her Native American community. But it's going to take her on a journey that she never could have imagined. Now, this is part realistic. There's part suspense. There's part mystery. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a whole murder mystery built in. There's romance. There's hockey. There's there's family. There's trying to figure out who you are. There's, there's literally a little bit of everything. Like, this book has something for everyone. Now, please be aware there are discussions and there are descriptions and there are scenes of rape, drug abuse, racism, and death, but they are handled in a realistic and a balanced way. Now, again, this is one of my favorite reads of last year. Highly recommend this one. This is Firekeeper's Daughter. Crossing the Line. Okay, I loved this one too. And I never would have picked this up unless I, I was forced to and I, I kind of was in a way. But I'm so glad I did. This is Crossing the Line. Now, in this nonfiction mem book, it's a memoir. It's all about how Polo changed the author's life as well as his brother's. Okay, it's a completely true story. Now, growing up in the rough neighborhood of West Philadelphia, Kareem was exposed to gun violence, drug abuse, addiction, and doing like just what it took to stay alive. Now, when he was eight years old, he stumbles across upon this program and it's in this park called Work to Ride. And it's this stable that's filled with horses and it's in the middle of the city and it provides children the opportunity to learn how to play polo but here's what they had to do in order to get that they had to take care of the horses and they had to stay out of trouble and stay in school it is through this program though that kareem learned how to play the sport and it ends up literally changing his life and the opportunities that he gets is they're amazing now 
But it wasn't as easy as what that sounds because he faces challenges both on and off the field and each very different, making him to the person he is today. Now, I know this sounds like it wouldn't be a very exciting read, but but it, it is. There are some scenes that you're, that you're in the middle of these like polo competition stuff and you're just like on the edge of your seat wanting to know what happens. Or, you know, Kareem has to make a choice that you know, you know what you would choose, but you have no idea what he's going to choose. And, You'll be cheering on Kareem and his brothers, as well as maybe dreaming about something that you want to do to improve yourself as well. This is crossing the line. And our last one is somewhere between bitter and sweet. Now, Penelope loves working at her father's restaurant. In fact, she loves it so much that she has dreams that she wants to go to culinary school, she wants to become a baker, and she wants to add her bakery to her father's restaurant. But that is not what her parents have planned for her. Instead, they expect her to go to nursing school and become a nurse. Now, she decides to take matters into her own hands. And as she decides to start skipping classes and not becoming a nurse while working at the restaurant, her parents find out. And that is when they issue her an ultimatum. They fire her from the restaurant and they tell her that if she does not go back to nursing school, then they are going to kick her out of the house and she's not going to have any place to live. It is on her last day of working at the restaurant that she meets Xander, who is starting his first day at the restaurant. Living with his grandfather on vegan documented, Xander has a lot on his mind. And then meeting Penelope is, was not one of them. That was not part of the plan, what he needed to do. Filled with candid talk about immigration, mental health, dreaming, familial expectations. And it's one that everyone can relate to, even though everyone's life is different. If you enjoy, love, a good contemporary romance that is sold from both points of view, this is the title for you. This is somewhere between bitter and sweet. So these are just six of the award-winning books we have from this year. And again, there were so many it was hard to choose from. So I encourage you to come on out, check out one of these, or we can help you take a look at the other award-winning books that we have here at the library. So I hope you tune back next week. We have a whole new Teen Book Spotlight, and I hope you have an amazing week.